Section 39 of The Pink Fairy Book. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Elliot Miller. The Pink Fairy Book by Andrew Lang. The Sparrow with the Slit Tongue. From the Japanese Marchen und Sagen. A long, long time ago, an old couple dwelt in the very heart of a high mountain. They lived together in peace and harmony, although they were very different in character, the man being good-natured and honest, and the wife being greedy and quarrelsome when anyone came her way that she could possibly quarrel with. One day the old man was sitting in front of his cottage, as he was very fond of doing, when he saw flying towards him a little sparrow, followed by a big black raven. The poor little thing was very much frightened and cried out as it flew, and the great bird came behind it terribly fast, flapping its wings and craning its beak, for it was hungry and wanted some dinner. But as they drew near the old man, he jumped up and beat back the raven, which mounted with hoarse screams of disappointment into the sky, and the little bird, freed from its enemy, nestled into the old man's hand, and he carried it into the house. He stroked its feathers and told it not to be afraid, for it was quite safe. But as he still felt its heart beating, he put it into a cage where it soon plucked up courage to twitter and hop about. The old man was fond of all creatures, and every morning he used to open the cage door, and the sparrow flew happily about until it caught sight of a cat or a rat or some other fierce beast, when it would instantly return to the cage, knowing that there no harm could come to it. The woman, who was always on the lookout for something to grumble at, grew very jealous of her husband's affections for the bird and would gladly have it done some harm had she dared. At last, one morning, her opportunity came. Her husband had gone to the town some miles away down the mountain, and would not be back for several hours. But before he left, he did not forget to open the door of the cage. The sparrow hopped about as usual, twittering happily, and thinking no evil. And all the while the woman's brow became blacker and blacker, and at length her fury broke out. She threw her broom at the bird, who was perched on a bracket high up on the wall. The broom missed the bird, but knocked down and broke the vase on the bracket, which did not soothe the angry woman. Then she chased it from place to place, and at last had it safe between her fingers, almost as frightened as on the day that it had made its first entrance into the hut. By this time the woman was more furious than ever. If she had dared, she would have killed the sparrow then and there. But... As it was, she only ventured to slit its tongue. The bird struggled and piped, but there was no one to hear it, and then, crying out loud with the pain, it flew from the house and was lost in the depths of the forest. By and by, the old man came back, and at once began to ask for his pet. His wife, who was still in a very bad temper, told him the whole story, and scolded him roundly for being so silly as to make such a fuss over a bird. But the old man, who was much troubled, declared she was a bad, hard-hearted woman, to have behaved so to a poor, harmless bird. Then he left the house and went into the forest to seek for his pet. He walked many hours whistling and calling for it, but it never came, and he went sadly home, resolved to be out with the dawn and never to rest till he had brought the wanderer back. Day after day he searched and called, and evening after evening he returned in despair. At length he gave up hope, and made up his mind that he should see his little friend no more. One hot summer morning the old man was walking slowly under the cool shadows of the big trees, and without thinking where he was going he entered a bamboo thicket. As the bamboos became thinner he found himself opposite to a beautiful garden, in the center of which stood a tiny, spick-and-span little house, and out of the house came a lovely maiden, who unlatched the gate and invited him in the most hospitable way to enter and rest. "'Oh, my dear old friend!' she exclaimed. "'How glad I am you have found me at last! I am your little sparrow, whose life you saved, and whom you took such care of!' The old man seized her hands eagerly, but no time was given him to ask any questions, for the maiden drew him into the house, and set food before him and waited on him herself. While he was eating, the damsel and her maids took their lutes, and sang and danced to him, and altogether the hours passed so swiftly that the old man never saw that darkness had come, 
or remembered the scolding he would get from his wife for returning home so late. Thus, in dancing and singing and talking over the days when the maiden was a sparrow hopping in and out of her cage, the night passed away, and when the first rays of sun broke through the hedge of bamboo, the old man started up, thanked his hostess for her friendly welcome, and prepared to say farewell. "'I'm not going to let you depart like that,' said she. "'I have a present for you, which you must take as a sign of my gratitude.' And as she spoke, her servants brought in two chests, one of them very small, the other large and heavy. "'Now choose which of them you will carry with you.' So the old man chose the small chest, and hid it under his cloak, and set out on his homeward way. But as he drew near the house his heart sank a little, for he knew what a fury his wife would be in, and how she would abuse him for his absence. And it was even worse than he expected. However, long experience had taught him to let her storm and say nothing, so he lit his pipe and waited till she was tired out. The woman was still raging and did not seem likely to stop, when her husband, who by this time had forgotten all about her, drew out the chest from under his cloak and opened it. Oh, what a blaze met his eyes! Gold and precious stones were heaped up to the very lid, and lay dancing in the sunlight. At the sight of these wonders even the scolding tongue ceased, and the woman approached, and took the stones in her hand, setting greedily aside those that were the largest and most costly. Then her voice softened, and she begged him quite politely to tell where he had spent his evening, and how he had come by these wonderful riches. So he told her the whole story, and she listened with amazement, till he came to the choice which had been given him between the two chests. At this her tongue broke loose again, as she abused him for his folly in taking the little one, and she never rested till her husband had described the exact way which led to the sparrow princess's house. When she had got it into her head, she put on her best clothes and set out at once. But in her blind haste she often missed the path, and she wandered for several hours before she at length reached the little house. She walked boldly up to the door and entered the room as if the whole place belonged to her, and quite frightened the poor girl, who was startled at the sight of her old enemy. However, she concealed her feelings as well as she could and bade the intruder welcome, placing before her food and wine, hoping that when she had eaten and drunk she might take her leave, but nothing of the sort. "'You will not let me go without a little present?' said the greedy wife, as she saw no signs of one being offered her. "'Of course not,' replied the girl, and at her orders two chests were brought in, as they had been before. The old woman instantly seized the bigger, and staggering under the weight of it, disappeared into the forest, hardly waiting even to say good-bye. It was a long way to her own house, and the chest seemed to grow heavier at every step. Sometimes she felt as if it would be impossible for her to get on at all, but her greed gave her strength, and at last she arrived at her own door. She sank down on the threshold, overcome with weariness, but in a moment was on her feet again, fumbling with the lock of the chest. But by this time night had come, and there was no light in the house, and the woman was in too much hurry to get to her treasures, to go and look for one. At length, however, the lock gave way, and the lid flew open, when, oh horror, instead of gold and jewels, she saw before her serpents with glittering eyes and forky tongues, and they twined themselves about her and darted poison into her veins, and she died, and no man regretted her. End of The Sparrow with the Slit Tongue Recording by Elliot Miller www.voiceofe.com